Greetings. This is your girl, Minister Asia. I'm back for yet another video. This is going to be a short one today. All right, let's say our mantra and let's begin. For I know who I am and whom that I stand, whom empowers me to be. I am an ambassador for Christ. This is the hour to recognize me. Okay, today's day 19. I'm still doing the 40 day soul fast. Goodbye. Just kidding. <laughs> Anyway, I am still doing this, the 40 day soul fast. Today is day 19, all about envisioning. And the 19th characteristic of an authentic individual is that of focus. I guess you want to be a little bit redundant, but I'm not. Since we talked in depthly about focusing, you guys can go back and set yourselves again and watch day 18 as I talk to you briefly about envisioning. The literal definition for the word envision basically means to um, imagine as a future possibility, to visualize. Isn't that something? So in the world, they teach you seeing is believing. But I'm just like Jesus. When he talked to Doubting Thomas, he told him it's better for us to believe without have seen than to have to see to believe. Isn't that something? But... I am so elated about what God is doing in me in this 40 day soul fast. This morning I went into a company that I frequent. And as I went to this company, the woman looked at me, she was like, oh my God, you must be off today. And I'm like, well, yeah, you know, I'm off like permanently. <laughs> no, I'm off today. So she's like, so what are you gonna do fun? And I said, I'm reading a book. She said, really, what book is it? And I told her, oh, with the 40 days so fast. She said, you know what? I can see the joy of the Lord all over you. And I began to witness to her and she said something to me that I thought was so <sighs> sad on my heart. I had to come back to the car and talk about it. Um, she said to me, I don't know how I could have forgotten about him. But I know the Lord is so good. But it wasn't until you walked in today smiling with the joy of the Lord on you that I remembered how good he was to me. And we went on to quote various scriptures to each other. She's like, you know, I just got so engrossed in this position in this life. She's a manager at the company in which I frequent. And she had gotten so engrossed in the role that she played in that company that she forgot who she was in God. So sometimes as you begin to envision and really see the possibility of who you are, it smears off and rubs off on other people. So my challenge to you today, Ambassador, is to have a contagious anointing on your life. To have an anointing of God, be so engrossed in him that it makes it attractive to other people around you. That when they see you, they gotta have the Jesus that you house. Isn't that awesome? That was my first testimony. My second testimony for today was this. After I left that place, um, I generally don't go in the bank. Just don't go in. I try to do all my stuff I can. I go to the ATM, la la la, pay us whatever I can pay online. I just don't like tellers. <laughs> I'm just anti-social. I'm so anti-social. However, the debit card that I have, it has a limit of how many, how much funds you can get out. And I needed an additional $100 so that I can make sure all my bills were paid in one day. Isn't that awesome? And so um, I used to have to wait to pay periods and stuff like that. But God is just really blessing me and I thank him so much. But anyway, that's another testimony for another day. The reason why the Lord allowed me to go into the bank today was because it was the first of the month and the line was extremely long, but the position of which he had me stand in the bank was directly adjacent to the security deposit boxes. And there's this huge fault and on the sign it says um, you have to wait for like associate assistance to um, access that dimension or that area of the bank. 
And the Lord began to tell me, as you are embarking upon day 19, you have to envision your financial state in a greater capacity than it is now. I know Merle Lent sent you your letter talking about your um stocks and your bonds and your 401k and all the things that you set up in your 20s, but you're planning on leaving a legacy and you have to get to a point where you have like Swiss bank accounts and security deposit boxes and all these things because your level of thinking is far too small for the wealth and prosperity that I have laid up for you. I hath not seen, ear hath not heard, neither entered into the hearts of man the things I have prepared for those who love me. And I absolutely love the Lord God with all my heart, mind, and soul. I wouldn't let a day go by without being faithful to him like I said I would be for this faithful 40. And so when he allowed me to stand in that place and to envision what God was going to do for me, it was amazing because for the first time in a long time because I remember when I first wrote million dollars down in 2006 and then I started getting my stocks and stuff I was like man you know can I should I really ask God for me could I really ask God for me will I you know and it was like a fear of even writing those six you know zeros and all of that but the Lord said, we're going to take you to seven figures, and then we're going to take you to be to a point of a status of a billionaire, and from billionaire to oblillionaire, because there's unlimited possibilities for you. If you just trust me, because I have to get the wealth in your hands so that you can redistribute it to other people. So that was what I got out of the day of envisioning and what I could see myself at. He broadened my horizon. I see myself on a higher plane, a deeper depth, and it's not all about money. Trust me and believe. I'm not one of those prosperity preachers. Been there, done that. And I believe in the word of God, what it says according to it, but I don't believe in prostituting my anointing and trying to pimp people for their wages. I just don't do that. But I do believe that you can be a prosperous Christian. And because the Bible says in John 10 and 10 that um, the thief coming out, but it's still killing the destroy. But Jesus came that we may have life and have it more abundantly. And in the Amplified Bible, it says to the full until it overflows. And I want overflow in my life, overflowing joy, overflowing health, wealth, prosperity, peace, ingenuity, creativity, witty ideas. I want my books to be on the best selling um, list, New York Times bestseller. I want so much because all that I am strings back to and is grounded, rooted, and established in the kingdom of God. So look forward to a teaching on the kingdom very, very soon. Um, and the final testimony is a funny, silly testimony. It ain't really got anything to do with envisioning focus, the 40-day so fast, or the faithful 40. It's just funny. <laughs> anyway, let me tell you. While I was standing in the bank, this one, I wasn't feeling the bangs. I just wasn't. If you have to get approval for someone else to to like a hairstyle, then it's not the hairstyle for you. You have to just go with what you like. I like what I like. And I like my hair to be straight. I don't really like a lot of curls in my hair. And I like it to be... um Like straight out the pack and in my hair. And I like it to be a good 12, 12 to 14 inches. I can do 18. These right here, I guess somebody's been watching the Ambassador Hour and wanted me to have 22 inches. So this is a 22 inch Malaysian hair. Seven bundles of it from Pretty Girl Beauty Supply. I can already tell that I'm not going to like the tangling of it, that I'm going to have to brush this a lot. But I got. 14 bundles so I'm gonna have to rock this hair <laughs> I'm gonna rock these seven and rock the other seven but anyway this the reason why I'm talking about hair is because I was standing in the line at the bank and there was this girl there she was a teller and she had half of her head shaved and the other half had that Megan good beautiful cute little um hair cut like she had on jumping the broom and I was like, oh, her hair is so cute. I just love it. Then 
the real me came back and said, don't you even try it. You already got your Malaysian bundles in the car. Don't you dare even think you're going to cut your hair again because it's taking you forever and a day to grow it back from the time Dej Loaf had you thinking you could rock that pixie cut. No, ma'am, no, God. Go back and look at why. My hair was cut on why. And so... <laughs> I've been growing it back ever since then. And so I just got in the car. I wanted to just be silly and tell um Morris, because you know he loves my hair long. And um anyway, long story short, I was like, yeah, so um I've seen this hair. No, no. Then he went on to say something that was a word. That was a word that goes with this envisioning. He said, you don't look to see yourself in other people. You look in the mirror, which is the word of God. He said, that's what the brazen labor was all about. I said, you go, boy. You know this word now, don't you? <laughs> and so as we're envisioning and we're embarking upon this faithful 40 and we're going to the path of true authenticity we have to envision ourselves as god has predestined and ordained us we have to see ourselves as god sees ourselves and bishop paul is more and i love him he's a worshiper too ever since bow down and worship him i've been loving him and worshiping him but he has this song on this um about all cried out song cd and um it came out like in 2012 or 11 with the full gospel choir but william murphy is featured on that album and one of the songs that they have with the full gospel choir bishop paul s morton and william murphy it's called teach me it ain't called that but these are the lyrics teach me to see me as you see me lord teach me to see me the way that you see me sometimes i see pain lord but you see victory and so i'm not what i was lord but i will am what i should be da -da -da -da. teach me to see me as you see me something like that but i love that song and that's what the lord said go back to looking at yourself the way i look at you do you see the smile on my face do you hear the joy in my voice can you see my whole countenance has changed since i embarked on this faithful 40. I feel a vibrancy in my spirit. Even now, as I said, I could feel the Holy Spirit just come all over my body. There is a vibrancy in my spirit. The place I am in God now, I wish for everyone. I wish for the body of Christ. Oh, my yeah, God. God. I wish they had that divine connection with God. Sure, I could look in my flesh and name and critique and, mm, but God, but God, amen. So let me pray for you and let me get off this camera. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray that you touch the person on the other side of this lens. Whether they're holding a cellular device, iPad, sitting at a desktop, or on a phone, God. Um, whatever they are, wherever they are, if they're hearing it, eavesdrop into somebody else, Lord God. This prayer is for them. Father, I pray that they envision and visualize and see the faith, the future possibility of being saved, healed, delivered, and set free. I pray, Lord God, that they have no lack in their life. I pray that the joy of the Lord be overflowing in their life. I pray that they reach a place of wholeness, nothing missing and nothing broken. Father God, you are no respecter of persons. Just as you have rescued me, I know you will rescue them, redeem them, and set them free. Father God, you have created this platform for a purpose. 
and I will use it for your glory to bring people to your kingdom. I love you, God. Let this prayer go far into heaven and bring back angels to save, heal, deliver, and set everyone who is divinely assigned to me free. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray. Amen, amen, amen. So let it be. The promises of the Lord, they are yea and amen. Tap into this thing. It's real. It is so real. I'm loving this 40 days so fast. I'm loving getting back refreshed by God. I'm just loving it. And then and now while we're all into this loving, go on and like loving people by sharing Christ on Facebook. Give me a big thumbs up here on this YouTube page. Hit the subscribe button below. And before I go, if you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, I suggest that you get to know him. And if you don't know how, please read Romans chapter 10, verses 9 through 10. Confess with your mouth. Believe in your heart that Jesus died on the cross for you, and that will make you saved. For any questions, cares, concerns, feel free to comment in the box down below. And you can email ambassadorforchrist.as at gmail.com. Befriend me on Facebook, Asia P. Searcy. And you can Snapchat with me at Asia Puri, the number one. And follow me on Twitter at Puri202. And if you don't know how to spell Puri, it's P-A-R-I. I love you and goodbye for now.